this computer. There we go. The recording is in progress. Hello, everybody. This is our uh, our meeting. Is uh, our little gathering, our little Monday uh, get together, which we love to do because you get we get so many people watching this now. I mean, uh, literally more than any other show I do, without a question. And that is because of the people who call this program, who are all kind of really cool. Yeah, just trying to mat down my hair because I need a haircut. Uh, you know what also I need? I need some hair right here. See this? What happened is because I did that fall and I scraped and uh, this got all bloodied up. Do you remember last week it had a big scab on it? Well, when the scab came off, there's no hair underneath. So am I going to have to bring my, my mustache down here? I don't know. Uh, but we'll wait and see if it grows back. If it doesn't, I will I will take appropriate action. I'll maybe cut off the whole mustache and leave this here as a goatee or something. I don't know. But anyway, we got so many people. I better get to them here. Otherwise, they're not going to be talking to me. They'll be so mad that I didn't talk to them. Here comes Charlene Solis and Scott Boddicker. Wow. Uh, Paul Levin. Uh Let's see here. I got to get everybody straight. Uh, with Charlie Wallace, Paul Levin, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Mike Chisholm, Hello. Uh, Deutsch, um, uh, Len LaFrisco, uh, Jeffrey Stein is trying to get on as usual. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, Hurricane Francine. There she is. <laughs> You know, uh, and there's one, there's one, what's coming after uh, Francine? Do you know what's coming after Francine? Yes. Nope. You do know? Gordon. Him? Gordon, which is my middle name. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. So we're, we we have some something going on here. Uh, <laughs> let me see here. Also, I have Vernon Nunn. I got to bring him in. And uh, Brian Neary, I got to bring him in. Uh, boy, there's a ton of people here today. Wow. Okay, I'll we, leave. we heard we heard you were serving Haitian hot dogs, so we came early. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. I thought right. it was sweet and sour Sylvester. Uh no, we have um, <laughs> here at our uh, Meow. Uh, here at our Haitian restaurant, we have uh, our specialty today is Siamese cat a la <laughs> that Here's an interesting phenomenon. I know because I went to school near Springfield. Matter of fact, yeah. so did Giller. Where Giller went to college is only about 20, 30 minutes from there. I've got lots of friends. Everybody has the urban myth working. Everyone knows someone who saw a Haitian carrying two geese under. It's always the same story. So I'm leaving the park with two geese under their arms. So it must be true. <laughs> but it's the same story to everyone. It's it's it, it it it's like it's become part of the dialect already. Oh yeah, I know a guy from there. It's the mm -hmm. same when uh, when Hillary was in office. I knew at least 20 people who claimed to be related to one of her Secret Service uh, people <laughs> who didn't like her. But it's like everyone in the world knows the the, the three people on her duty. It's... I've got I've got this whole thing that I would I would love to do and go to, you know, to Springfield and do it and have like, you know, stuffed geese and stuff like that and walking around with them under my arms, you know. I mean, it's, it's terrible what's happened to that poor town. I mean, what it, it, can you describe it? You you come from that area, right? No, but I, I lived there there when I was in Springfield's a nice small. It's a small like a, a bedroom town to Dayton or Columbus. It's very yeah. not far, and and it's a nice place. It was back then. Wittenberg University's there, which is a really good school, and uh, it's a great community. I worked there when I was in college. I had a job and would commute from where I was in school up. It was about a forty five minute drive when I'd have to go to the office. Very nice place. But yeah. but but we are surrounded in Ohio. As soon as you get out of a town, and, and Paula knows this because she's in Akron, you start driving 30 minutes out of town, you're out in the country, hog farms and, and whatever. How and about all five, these people, five minutes out of town, really? Yeah, and but the thing is, all these people when they were kids, they were shooting squirrels and making squirrel stew, and, mm -hmm. and they go deer hunting, they go duck hunting, they go goose hunting. So so what's the what's the problem? A, a guy's hungry and he eats a goose. Now, why why would you why would you say it's a cat? Because that's racially offensive. It used to be, oh, the Chinese restaurant just opened yeah. uh, at the Chinese restaurant. They must be killing all the cats in the neighborhood. 
You know, there was always that racial trope of cat eating, which isn't part of anybody's well, diet. The best it's, part about this is, though, that uh, uh, Trump has said that if he's elected president, uh, he will deport all those people into from from uh, 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 Springfield, Springfield back to Venezuela. <laughs> Where they don't even speak the language because Haitians speak French. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't understand but, it. If, you, if you've ever had, <laughs> if you've ever had, by the way, by the way, relationship with Haitian mentioned, folks. Wait a, minute, wait a minute. Now that you mention it, you mm -hmm. know, if if you think these people are stupid or something like that, they're not because they're kids speak fluent French at three. You know, yeah. it's pretty amazing. <laughs> we don't. Yeah, they, but but the, the thing is, if, if you know people of the Haitian community in, in the mm -hmm. U.S., I don't know any of any of the folks that I know from there who don't have two jobs, hardest working people. They've got the highest productivity because they want to succeed. They've got strong family. The reason that Haiti has such a horrible reputation is back in their country, which has been totally decimated by by corruption over the years. They, they live in desperation. When you take someone out of that environment and you bring them to a productive place like this, they become great piece parts of society because at the core, they're quality people who care about their family and 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 want to. It's so it's so insulting, so, so ridiculous. And by the way, yesterday, J.D. or Saturday, J.D. Vance admitted that he made up the story. He says, if I have to make up more stories to get people to talk, I will. So. Well, you know, I mean, here, and we don't want to get political about a, this, but the fact is that every minute that we spend on this Haitian story is one minute we take away from the realities of the election. Mm -hmm. You know, you mean that part where Kamala Harris kicked ass? That's exactly what they want to do, is because the more you talk about that, like, watch MSNBC, and I'm thinking to myself, these people are out to elect Trump. Because mm -hmm. all they do is talk about Trump, 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 and then something like this happens. They go crazy over this. All the know, channels, Alex. About. All the channels. All and, the channels. Do I that. mean, it's time for our our side to do some dumb stuff. You know, then maybe they'll talk about it. Yeah. Then then all the memes are like just controlled by all these cat videos in stoves. And the dog, yeah. the little chihuahuas in pots, and they open up the pots. You know, it's really terrible. Yeah, I just wish the Simpsons would weigh in. Yeah. Well, but there's, there's an interesting, Alex, there's an interesting piece to this, because I went to the, the deli at, at the BJ's Wholesale Club to get some stuff. And the two women who worked the counter there, and I've been friendly for a long time. And one of them asked me if I'd seen the debate. And I said, yes, well, I'm still on the fence. So what are you on the fence about? Well, you know, I get my, I, I was watching on TikTok, and they said that she was wearing a hearing aid for earrings. And that they purposely aimed the lights at Trump to make him look bad, and that Kamala actually wrote some to, of the questions. You, you don't have to focus the lights to make him look bad. Well, but yeah. the point, the point, the point being that the 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 generation of nonsense from them and from the Russians and from that that's just all over TikTok, it's eighty percent false, and we've got an entire population of people that believe it. So, so no matter what truth or whatever you, unless you can get one on one and and show evidence, these these folks don't get the message. They didn't watch the debate. All they're seeing is the lies. That's the only thing they're exposed to because we we allow it. These foreign yeah. foreign governments don't care who wins. They just want us fighting. I saw Did a thing you on uh, on YouTube uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and when the guy went out to uh, Brooklyn to the Orthodox Jew area. Oh. OK, mm -hmm. um, where the uh, uh, Hasidim reside mm -hmm. and started interviewing the Hasidim about who they were voting for to the person. They said Trump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, the Hasidic, they, they are not Zionists. Their the, their culture is not Zionist. They believe in 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 the, the Jewish homeland is the world. And they, they they are for Israel is existing, but but they're not. So so the, this right wing messaging makes sense to them. Well, I mean, it, it's just amazing there. I mean, there to, to the person. I mean, he was interviewing one guy with curls on his head, all with a lot of other people with the curls on his head. Uh, and everyone, every one of them, you know, and I'm going. 
really? You know, you're voting for this anti-Semite crying out loud, you know? No, well, they, they also they follow the Rebbe, whatever, whatever the, mm -hmm. the, the local rabbi who, who runs things. That's the boss. And they're very they're very autocratic. That's the way they live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, well, the ones that went to Israel, you know, that they've they've set up shop now in Israel and they're controlling everything now from from, from the Israeli government. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, what right. happened? What happened? But they don't serve. It, what? They don't sure. serve in the military. No, they don't. Right. They're exempted, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. It's been yeah. it's been an ongoing battle, uh, but um, I don't know what the latest ruling was because the, the the uh, I mean that was a big thing in Israel about uh, um, them being non productive citizens. And they and they also don't have good recipes <laughs> for they don't have recipes for cooking good cats either. So no, they don't. <laughs> no, wait, a minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute, I don't know. Are cats trafe? <laughs> they absolutely <laughs> are. <laughs> How about I think, dogs? I think if you have the rabbi circumcise them before you butcher them, they're okay. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I'm going to injure Charlie today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even when we get a little political, we get hilarious here. So, you mm. know, it's good. Uh, hello, Mandy. Mandy's working. Mandy's working. Yeah. I'm working yeah. too. I'm I'm working too. Just, just I'm working too. for your work. Are you? I I am too. I should tell you know I should be able to tell with both of you guys is the ceiling and that yeah. kind of light is you don't find that in anybody's home. No, you know. It's true. It's true. Usually uh, in my house, I'm not sitting there with my TikTok shop keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you got yeah. me on green, but I saw it's Do you want to say something? Oh, that is a, a, that's a, that's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? That's a hard that? keyboard. That's a what? That's a hardcore <laughs> keyboard. Well, no, it's actually really mm -hmm. tiny and wow. it's like soft keys, and the little mouse matches it. So it's called. Oh, oh, that's, <laughs> oh that's cute. Oh, that's <laughs> adorable. That's a good TikTok shop. It's a good thing it's not a cat. cat. Huh? It's a mouse, not a cat, or some someone come in your office and eat it. Yeah, <laughs> now, get enough with the jokes about eating dogs. <laughs> you see this? You see this? What? Oh Jesus! Aw, that's that's me at seventeen years old working at Halo Packard. Wow, oh, oh, I worked at oh my McDonald's goodness. when I was seventeen. Yeah, so you beat me at that. That's yeah. a great picture. Yeah, I got a, I got another picture for all of you. This is this that this happened on Saturday night. <gasps> oh! We had a hot date Saturday night. <laughs> When's the wedding? Lynn, he Lynn, picked you're... me up in this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, could you get in it? Uh, you know what? <laughs> Ask him the noise I, I was making getting in and out of that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is that uh, that uh, really Marjorie uh, doesn't want to move back to California because she goes, well, I have no friends out there. But oh, look yeah. at all the friends I have out there. <laughs> right. No, we're all her friends. What's she talking about? Yeah, huh? come see us, Marjorie. We're here. <laughs> I don't want to move. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, 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 Brian has or offered to pick us up at the airport. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I'll take that car. I got to take two, two, two times. <laughs> <laughs> Three times, the third one for the luggage. But you just <laughs> bought a new Cadillac, didn't you? Yeah, I, I will chauffeur you guys around. Don't worry. Well, that'll look like you're chauffeuring. I'll get you a hat. One of those. Mar Mar Marjorie, <laughs> Marjorie, if you lived here, you'd be more fun because Alex probably can't leave the house anyway. So. <laughs> no, I can't even get him to walk around the block. Well, I'm worried about that. We're going to go on vacation in about. Well, you got to start ahead. walking around the block, Alex. Yeah. yeah. I walked around the block with you, and I barely make it now. We'll, we'll get you some training I wheels. Make it. It yeah. looks like your face is all healed up, though. Yeah. Yes, but you know what's happened? This piece is missing out of my mustache, right? It'll grow back. I'm just sorry. Huh? It'll be. It'll be fine. Well, I think I scraped it so much that I scraped off any of the follicle the, creation. The roots are below the skin, Alex. We'll, we'll introduce you to the mustache club for men. 
Yeah. We'll grow it. <laughs> I have a little makeup on today, but only to take care of my redness up here. But uh, uh-huh. I, uh, I, I really have. It's amazing how fast I healed. Actually, my face. Less than a week. Less than a week. Well, not less than a week, but around a week. Yeah, it, it just it just uh, completely uh, healed. Now I still have a, a big bruise on my leg, and uh, what else? Uh, uh, there's one other thing that isn't working. The black and blue has gone from blue to green and now yellow. So it's on its way out. Meanwhile, yeah. if you can't remember what to complain about, I think that's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> what? That that you 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 had trouble remembering what else was what was the matter? Yeah, I mean, it really, I, I I pretty well cleared up to tell you the truth on that, you know, which amazes me because it was pretty fast. Because I did have sores everywhere. Yeah. You remember from last week. And they've kind of all gone away. And I haven't picked the scabs or anything like that. They just fell uh, off. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Busted. Oh, God. What did I hear? Hey, my mother is now calling. Is dinner ready yet? <laughs> She's looking. I was just no, I'm just saying I, it the I, way I, I hear it. I, I wish she had had a kid. <laughs> then she wouldn't treat me like one. You know, she I have enough raising of kids. I don't need to raise you two, you know. <laughs> and then she said something pathetic to me today. Tell them what you told me. What did I tell you? She doesn't remember. <laughs> Give me a hint. He says that she says, I have I have girlfriends in town that I can go have lunch with, but I can hardly wait to get home to see you. Which is true. Oh. I said that. I mean. And I think that means you have a pretty pathetic life. <laughs> oh, 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 you've never been. Okay, that's sweet. That's not pathetic. That's a sweet thing to say. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I think he's bragging. Uh, yeah, I think he's bragging. Uh, you know, I don't it's a humble, humble brag. I have my priority. Yeah, yeah. Here's my priority. Now, how's everything going up in Canada? Uh, You know, it's a big country, but uh, steady as she goes from what I see. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, how about you? How about your life? I'm doing well. I'm busy. Really, really, really busy. Just shot an episode of the podcast this morning with uh uh with one of the camera crew who was there from Are you TV. down to the camera people now? Oh, I want them all. I want I want everybody. Next, I want them next, all. Next you're gonna get the cleaning woman. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Sure, we'll take them. We'll take them. Um, but I wanted to talk about the Emmys. Did anybody else watch the Emmys last night? I no. forgot completely. I watched them and I really enjoyed them. It was the first mm-hmm. Emmys I've watched for a long time that I loved. And I, I uh, have to credit the two Canadian co-hosts, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Levy and his uh, and his son, Eugene Levy and his son. Right? Yeah. yeah, Eugene Levy and Dan Levy. It was great. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they. they um, um, I didn't, I forgot it was on and I didn't watch it. And then I looked up who won and I felt I didn't have to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I can watch it. I have it on Hulu. I can the whole sh- the whole show's on Hulu. What a powerhouse FX has turned into, though, with uh, Shogun and the Bear. Yeah. It feels it feels like they were represented mm-hmm. the way AMC was during the heyday with uh, with with Breaking Bad <laughs> and 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 Walking Dead and some of the other shows they had. Uh, FX was really really they cleaned well, up FX last night. Been doing great stuff for years. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was just. I was, I'm sorry. I was just wondering about one thing, though. Why is Bear <laughs> considered a comedy? Not that I care, but you know what I mean. Like, I know it is not I'm a just, comedy. It's my wife and I were saying the same won, thing. It was in the comedy. Like, well, everybody in there won for comedy. We thought so, it was like, because the the FX did not want the Bear to go up against Shogun. We, yeah, that's what that's what we thought. My wife and I thought it was. That being oh. said, we we talked about it a lot. That Candy and I, sense. we laugh a lot when we watch The Bear. Like, we do. We laugh a lot. Well, no, it's just it, different it, comedy. Different comedy. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I don't know that it's a comedy. I, I would not. If somebody were to say to me, is The Bear, right. what is The Bear? And I'd say, it's this drama about. Right. You know, I wouldn't say it's this comedy about. It's, it's a dramedy, the way what? the West Wing used to be. Like, it's a dramedy for sure. It has a lot of laughs in it. There's no question. Like, the, 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 the stuff with the facts and all that stuff is just nothing but hilarity. Like, it's, it's, but it's a dramedy for sure. But I felt bad, for example, when now the woman who won supporting actress, she was wonderful in that one um, 
episode napkins where it focused on her. Yes. And it was wonderful. And I watched and I said, she's going to win an Emmy. Yeah. But she was up against, you know, like so many other great, like Carol Burnett and mm -hmm. Meryl Streep. And, and I just yeah. felt a little bad for them. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't feel bad for Meryl Streep. Well, I, you know. I do. I do. She won everything. I was very happy for Gene Smart last night. I was so happy for Gene Smart. He's yeah. great. That's a great show. Well, although yeah. she's no Pia Zadora. I'm not happy for any winners unless I'm one of them. Okay. So, you know. But then again, I have two Emmys. What do I need? Another one. Yeah, they give up to anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know. This is as close as I'll ever come right here. What is that? That's as close as I'll ever come to getting an Emmy. It, what is that? What it's, is it? Uh, this is the folder that uh, the David Letterman Morning Show was presented when they were nominated for their Emmy back in 82. And it's the parking pass and the telegram and all the things that came with the uh, congratulations you've been nominated for an Emmy for the morning show for Letterman. Who's been stealing all that stuff and getting it to you? I know. Isn't it crazy? A lot of people, a lot of people give me a lot of cool stuff from that. that Does thing. it have the comb from the men's room attendant at the show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I, I, as I say, I didn't watch it last night because I'd forgotten it was on. And um, I don't know, you know, I mean, it, it, okay. So Shogun wins 15 Emmys. That shows you how many Emmys they're giving out. Oh yeah, you know it's not like it's something really special <laughs> to get an Emmy. <laughs> Take it from me. Yeah, yeah. So. I disagree. Also, our friend David Letterman won an Emmy at the Creative Arts Emmys last week as well. By the way, it does come with the instructions that how to tie a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> that was in there as well as the parking pass and all that. But the Emmys are still a big thing. Like, come on, it's uh, it's an honor to win one of those. Nah, it's okay. You know, uh, otherwise, uh, the trouble also is, is that a lot of times you're up for the same category or up against uh, two or three of your fellow performers, you know, and that that kind of is does, it doesn't feel good. You know, uh, what do they do at work? Go, I hope you win. You know, mm -hmm. uh, no, it's hope I win. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, but, it, it, you know, then again. These award shows, okay, here's a good example. I got, what, how many people here right now? About uh, 15 people? Okay. Uh, what won the Academy Award for Best Picture last year? <laughs> um, huh? The Bear. Good one. Good one. The Bear. The bear. Was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was Cannonball Run, wasn't it? <laughs> no, but this, that's my point exactly. It doesn't matter. Because, yeah. you know, a week from Monday, most people are going to forget who won Emmys. Mm -hmm. Well, isn't that because in the, the movies, nobody goes to the movies anymore? It's We're so all kind of looted. split up in our little, like... Yeah. Well, I mean, but just any of these award shows, nobody remembers. You know, it's basically jerk-off night for the particular profession that's being honored. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, you look like you agree with that, Francine. I do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, um, and it's. Well, then why did it used to be a big deal? I think it used to be a big deal because it was special, like the Academy Awards. But it's just about the only award show there was, mm -hmm. you know. Also, when it was just three networks or four networks, I mean, it was a it was a much tighter horse race, and most people knew who all the players were. It's so diluted yeah. now that yeah. shows that people have never heard of are winning. Yeah, and people have never even heard of them. Yeah, I agree about that. Um, uh, and, and, but I mean that—that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem. There's too much stuff out there. Yep. You know, and um, too uh, much not great stuff. Yes. <laughs> what? Too much not great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I mean, it. it, 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 it we so we just watched a show. It's kind of interesting. It isn't over here. It's in in England. And uh, I think it's on Sky TV. Done by uh, yeah. Moffat. What's his name? What's Moffat's first name? 
I can't remember his first name. I did a lot of Doctor Who stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, called, uh, what's it called? Char- not Charles. Um, Goodbye. No, no. So some guy's name gets canceled. Oh, right, right, right. And it's about, it's with the stars, uh, what's her name, from Doctor Who. Uh, uh, let me just go online here and find it. <laughs> I just love that. I love what you just did there. Uh, you know, it's that show who stars oh. that girl, you yeah. know, <laughs> from that thing. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's called. It's That's Steven, my everyday conversation. Stephen Moffat, <laughs> Moffat is the creator. And it is called Douglas Get is Cancelled. And so the Hugh Bonneville, who you may remember from uh, Downton Abbey, yeah. and uh, Karen Gillan, who was the uh, companion. companion in uh, Doctor, Doctor Who, Who, and Doctor Alex Who. Kingston, who played, uh, what was her name, uh, River, uh, River Song on uh, Doctor Who. And... Uh, it's about a guy. It's very simple. It's four episodes. It's about a guy who has a TV show with Karen Gillan, the, the host of a morning show. I think it's a morning show or something like that. And he goes to a party. Over It starts off, he, he went to a party over the weekend. And now there is a, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a Twitter post or ex post or whatever that says that he told a sexist joke at this wedding and it's got went out to 1200 people oh. before it's over with there are millions and millions of postings of this thing and we still at this point we're on the fourth episode don't know what the joke was. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really more about the internet and how things spread like wildfire. And this it's guy very good. It's is really on good. the line and they can't even remember what he said. That's clever. I like <clears> it. And it's well, great. Did you hear did, did, I did think you hear what JD Vance said there. about Springfield? Uh, what? <laughs> J.D. Vance, J.D. Vance admitted that it was made up, but that they will yeah. continue to make up stories just to get the press to cover them. Oh boy! Did you, sure. Alex? Did you hear the rumor it. that I? Did you hear the rumor I created about Laura Loomer? No. With the yeah. maid at her hotel after she was with Trump found a Plan B box empty in her trash can. Completely, completely. I made it up, but it's yeah, it, you made it's it up. every. I, I believed it, it for a second. It's, it's, I, I believed it's, it when I saw it. That's so isn't great. it perfect? It, it covers every aspect of, Wait, of you know what what's wrong me? with America right there. Here's, here's the what's anti-abortion hor- chicks got. Here's what's <laughs> hor- horrible about our press today. So they hold a press conference with uh, Trump the other day. And somebody asked about Laura Loomer. Okay. And uh, he says, well, she's a, she's a very big political uh, a, a friend of mine and I you know she's on my side and all of that and whatever uh, I'm not responsible for anything she says which of course is what he always says about people not one reporter had the guts to say well let me ask you this are you sleeping with her <laughs> Nobody asked that question, even in a nice way like are you do you have some kind of relationship going with her nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> She's suing Bill yeah, Maher, you're... implying that they were having yeah. sex. Yeah, yeah. 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 There, really? There's a second. Yeah, yeah. She's gonna. So the 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 other one that I came up with that I thought was even better is that she's she's suing Twenty Three and Me to not release her genetic profile because it shows that she's eighteen percent African and fourteen percent Middle Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> that which also you know isn't true, but isn't it, true. It, it sure Let's fits. start passing that one around too. Yeah, there you, go. you know, I made it up, so it's it's completely false. Before somebody sues me, but of course, in satire, you can you can do that because you know they said Jerry Falwell had sex. Well, with they the were chicken. saying that J.D. Vance, you know, was saying that a lot of people have been writing me and telling me about the yeah. thing in Springfield and blah blah blah. So uh, who was it? Uh, oh yeah, it was uh, Jimmy Kimmel who put gave out his phone number. Yeah, two nights in a row. Two nights yeah. in a row, and said, text him with the following. 
uh, my kid ate some sprinkles, some rainbow colored sprinkles at Baskin Robbins. Yep. And is now gay. Yes. <laughs> Actually, he said, "Don't text him about that." Yeah, he said, "Do not. Whatever you do, yeah, don't take this phone number. <laughs> yeah. This phone number here is not for you to call. Do not call this phone number that I'm showing you on the screen yeah. because that's yeah. it." That guy is so good. To take it back to the Emmys for a second, I was I was really surprised that Jon Stewart and The Daily Show, I was really surprised Don, Jon Stewart accepted it. I really wanted Kimmel to win. His show, as far as I'm concerned, it's 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 very, very underrated when it's compared to the mm-hmm. other late night shows. He's so good. Because Kimmel doesn't care. Kimmel exactly. likes the fact that he's had a job for 20 years so far. Yep. And now he's thinking about leaving because yeah. it's just been a long time. You know, 20 years is a long time going in every day doing the same job, you know. Uh, but he does, yes, he does an absolutely marvelous job. Best, best monologue. Hmm? Best monologue of all of them. Absolutely. Yes. Well, he's the yes. only one that understands what a late night show is about. Hmm. None of the others have a clue. Yep. You know, with, yeah, Jimmy Kim, uh, with Jimmy Fallon, it will bring you with your name's got to be Jimmy in order to get a nice time <laughs> show. Remember when it was uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, James uh, Corden, yeah, uh, and there was one other. There was Stephen one other. Colbert, huh? Stephen, but that doesn't match. No, Stephen, Stephen Colbert. Colbert doesn't count. No, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so you know, um, I love. We have two people working, and they both have kind of the same posture. <laughs> I, think three, three people have, I think you have three and it's and it's two people that absolutely hate each other too i might ask <laughs> that's not true that's not that's, true that's jd best <laughs> you haven't seen a picture of her boyfriend yet have you no 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 you, you jealous that's, there brian <laughs> that's why <laughs> That might have a joke in there somewhere. Never mind. They're JD dancing you. <laughs> right. Right. I love that thing. We should just put that up as a tweet. You know, have you heard that the maid at the hotel mm-hmm. from <laughs> Born a Loomer staying yeah. found a plan B box in the trash? After that, her, night, that would after be after her night with Trump. Hmm. That would be amazing. Don't say that. Don't say that. Just, you know, let people assume the rest. Imagination. Yeah. yeah, I put it out there and said clearly that it's that it's a lie. I put it on my Facebook with a note saying that it's not true, and people asked me if it was okay to download it and repo- repost it. And I said, as long as you don't I, put my name on it. I just hope I just <laughs> hope he lo- loses this election, so I don't have to sit here and talk about him again. <clears throat> yeah, you know, yeah, well, they, I, they don't I, allow you to tweet from jail, so it's all good. Well, no. What, if he loses, if he loses this, that's it. We hear the last we hear from him. Outside of him complaining that he was robbed, you well, know. That every day, the, pro- yeah, the problem is you can get rid of the Trump riot. Yeah. Hmm? He might incite another riot. You know? Yeah, you can get rid of the man, but you can't get rid of the ism. Well. You know, I mean, where are they going to go? They can't go to the Capitol now because people will be there waiting for them. You know, so that's that's not going to happen. Hmm. What else is happening? I, I, heard, I heard I heard that Homeland Security is actually going to designate January 6th of 2025 in the same vein as the U.N. being in session, which means the security is going to be just as mm-hmm. tight as mm-hmm. if it were the U.N. in session in New York. Right. You by the way, U.N. sessions coming this week. Yeah, they, or as we know it in New York, the congest traffic scheme. <laughs> well, I know every, you know, like major people come to this town and they all have to be protected. And so, you know, they got to come from the airport. So the airport to here is lined with barricades and everything. Wow. And my dog lived in the building that was about 100 yards from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she- now she moved down to the financial district, but she lived in that building that was right. That's got to be hell. You know what's hell for us here where we live? And I'm sorry to say it. The uh, What was it yesterday they had? The annual Nation. Uh, African Day. African. Right? 
and it goes on for six hours. <laughs> well, it started at eight and ended at six. It, when did it start? Eight or ten. No, it started about 10 in the morning or something. Went till about six at night. Went till and six. Drums, 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 loud music. I mean, am I getting to be an old man when I got and wanted to yell out my window? Shh, can you shut the fuck up. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes. I don't I don't think any of that has to do with if the fact. If you had a lawn, you could tell them to stay off of it. What? What'd you say? Who said that if you had a lawn, you could tell them to stay off your lawn? Yeah, right. That's, right. that's right. That's what I equated Trump to when he at the debate. I said he sounds like the man that's yelling at everybody to get off his lawn because he was just <laughs> he was just he was I just da, da, da. well yesterday they had to get a guy off his lawn because he was armed. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. With an AK forty seven. Another another one of his derangement syndrome guys who woke up and said, "Oh my God, I got to get even with this guy who brainwashed me." Well, you know, I mean, the guy didn't even shoot at Trump. I don't think he got a shot off, did he? No. no. He tried to get one off from what I heard. No. The only shots were the uh, Secret yeah. Service agent yeah. who saw the rifle sticking through the bushes, and he shot at him. Mm -hmm. as, as far as Florida law goes, the guy did nothing wrong. Exactly. He's entitled to have a gun in public. There's no law against it. Yeah, yeah, except he's a felon in possession he of a shot weapon. His, his, well, he was a felon, yeah, yeah. If he shot his gun at the Secret Service, as somebody's here said, isn't that using the gun to protect yourself? If the, if the Secret Maybe Service shot first, yeah. He, yeah. Had to, he only had to point the gun. Yeah. He but, only had to point the gun at the Secret Service agent, and he broke federal law. Did yeah. he? But who, he didn't, who did he shoot at that? No. Doesn't he understand that that wasn't he the didn't have to shoot. <laughs> he didn't have to shoot at him. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I also heard today that he had he had camped out there for 12 hours before the incident. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, I'm that's glad it. people are finally committed to their jobs it. in this country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but can't we get somebody that does their job better? Stop! Stop <laughs> complaining about work ethic among the uh, among the youth. <clears throat> yeah, hey, here's the here's the state of here's the state of our elementary schools. I'm I'm getting an email right now from the from Adrian's elementary school mm -hmm. for their they're having their safety drills. It's called hide. Sorry, it's called run hide defend drill. Jesus. Yeah, that's where it does in not get funny. School. Run hide yeah. defend. So they're going to start these drills this week. I have no humor. What, they, what, do, you, to what that do they word. do? They have you hide, run and hide. Yeah, it's there for active shooters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a active shooter drill. Yeah. Active oh. shooter drills. These drills have a chance to discuss the best way to respond during difficult types of emergencies. Well, we well, know what difficult type of emergency that is. Is I mean, how many here have kids? Raise your hand. Adult, adult, adult kids. Adult, adult kids. kids. Grandkids. Adult, adult grandkids. Adult kids. Uh, grand, <laughs> or grandkids yeah. or whatever. Yeah, grade one and grand. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about the fact that, you know, you send your kid off to school and you don't know if he's coming back alive? I like living in Canada. That's what I say to that. Right. <clears throat> now, I, I hated it. My, I, my kids went to the largest high school in Georgia and they had a couple of lockdowns. I was surprised it wasn't more. Yeah. And my, her kid just, the school right down the street from here, middle school, a kid had a gun in his backpack. Wow. And he ran his mouth on the bus. And of course, these kids told on him, which, you know, I guess kids nowadays, they're going to tell because people. Oh, yeah. yeah. My, but now my, that, that, my there, daughter is, there was a school in Georgia recently. Right. That was not very far from here. But this was the school just right down the street. But in middle school, this kid was in middle school. I mean, and her my coworker's son goes there and he's autistic. So he was not he was kind of oblivious. They like protected you know, them and just kind of kept him busy or whatever. He didn't even really know. They didn't really tell what's going on. What's home. amazing to me are these people who, who you know, there's this, this love of guns in this country that I just don't understand. Like, they, the, it's like a religious right that you must protect your guns. Mm -hmm. You know, more mm -hmm. than you protect your children. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. well, and then it's, it's even more complicated because the, the schools <clears throat> in this area confiscate the cell phones. So, uh, you know, the whole thing about the, uh, the parents being able to contact the kids with cell phones. Mm -hmm. I understand the reasoning for it. It's because when the kids are at school with the cell phones, they, they, they communicate with each other and sometimes fights uh, yeah. um, start. Yeah. So, yeah. The, so, so the administrators decided that the, that, the, that, the, that the cure for that is to confiscate all the cell phones. I don't know if that's the answer. Of course, it's you know, not the answer. The, the answer is, the the answer is with is, the guns. The, pro yeah. the answer is saying in class right. to the students, shut that phone down. Well, yes, yeah, it's not that, that easy. And they also have that watches. does not work, Alex. That's it, yeah. way beyond that. Yeah. They also have watches, too. So my yeah, daughter is in right. class. Yeah. 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 They have like a big cubby section and they have to put their phone and their watch in there before they get into the studio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how, uh, Mandy, you were saying. I was saying when cell phones first became a thing, I mean, my kids were in high school. This was 10 years ago when they first like the social media and all that. And they really realized these kids were not going to give them up. Our principal was the first one in this large county to say, fine, you can have your phones. You just can't have them during class. Yeah, because before it was like you can't even bring him to school, and that was just he was getting everybody in trouble. So he just said, "You just cannot have him out during class." So and that like controlled it. Well, yeah. cool. okay. there's, a, there's an advantage for you as a parent for your kid to have a phone, right? Okay. And it, but it gave so it gave them some freedom. But then obviously when they're in the class, well, you're they, in class, you cannot use a cell phone. It's in almost like give a kid if you put too much restriction, they're going to rebel. You know what I don't understand? Okay, the, you know, we have technology that does amazing things, okay? We're amazed by the kind of technology that exists in, in, our, in our world. <laughs> and yet, they can't invent something that will jam phone signals in classrooms? Well, they can oh, they turn could. off the Wi-Fi. They, they, no, they, they have that, Alex. They, the they run them in prisons. They, but they're yeah. still going to be able to make calls using the phone service. Yeah. They, they, no, but they, they do that in prisons. They block they block cell phones from yeah. working. There's well, a why don't they do that in schools? And if there's suddenly a, some kind of dangerous situation, turn turn all the phones on. There's a school here, I think it's Marin County, where they give the kids a little sleeve and they have to put their phone oh. in the sleeve and lock it. Yeah. And it uh and they can't get at it unless they go to somebody with a magnetic thing that opens it. So Bruno, I just saw Bruno Mars and they had everybody walk or when you walked in, they put your phone in there and they clamp it and they give it to you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Probably got a Faraday shield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just, there are ways of dealing with this without having to, t and then if mm -hmm. there is some trouble in the school, you can then turn all the phones back on or right. allow them to get yeah. their mm -hmm. signal. And, and, you know, and I can see where it might be important. I mean, I, there are certain situations in which you could probably let the outside world know that somebody inside is there with a gun or in your, in your vicinity. Although I would think that when that happens, uh, uh, people who are running the school know what's happening, you know. If you hear a gunshot, you hear a gunshot. There aren't supposed to be gunshots in schools. Well, now there are, but there were, didn't used to be. You know, so it's amazing, just amazing. And and nobody does anything about it. You know, we just uh, <clears throat> you got to send your kid off to school and wonder whether he's going to come back alive. Hey, Scott, you've been quiet. Yes. <laughs> God, are, you, are you in Plano, <laughs> Texas right now? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh, okay. Texas. So we've never seen your room there in daylight, so I didn't know. Uh, we rearranged, so you're seeing the back of the room. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, other side. Uh, how's, every, how's everything in Plano, Texas? Just beautiful. Just yeah. wonderful. I mean, yeah. Plano, is it still the home of Snapple? No. We do this every week, every time. Oh, okay. It's, in, it's up in a town called Frisco, just th 10 miles north. Why? They moved it then. That's what they did. Yeah, yeah. They got sick of people asking about it. What? <laughs> Don't call it Frisco. <laughs> it's, it's no Frisco. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. The only person who got that joke was a guy in Texas. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> the town is called Frisco. In San Francisco, we had a columnist by the name of Herb Kane. Love Herb uh, Kane. Uh, and Herb Kane had a quote <laughs> that he used all the time. He said, Don't call it Frisco. So, you know, I, you would never find me as a person from San Francisco referring to where I was from as Frisco. Well, do you call New York the Big Apple? <laughs> like, nobody calls it the Big Apple. It, uh, it, well, yeah, but you, nobody gets upset when you call it the Big Apple. Well, I, in my head, I do. <laughs> huh? In my head, I do. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? Like because it's like it's the same thing. It's like it's not the Big Apple. It's New York. It's, cor- it's corny. But, it's old fashioned, right? Yeah, it's same uh, thing with Frisco. It doesn't. It yeah. doesn't fit anymore. It's touristy, it, you know. <laughs> I think it was back in the eighties that one of the worst tourism things Cleveland ever did was New York's the Big Apple, but Cleveland's a peach. Oh. <laughs> And everyone went, what? Right. <laughs> Actually, Peach is Georgia. Of course. That's why it was so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Our tourism slogan should be, at least we're not Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> the, the big kumquat. Have you, have you ever been to uh, to Atlanta? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And you ask somebody for directions, and they say, well, you go down Peach Tree Street. Right. <laughs> you're right on the Peach Tree. And then go two blocks and turn left onto Peach Tree, and and turn and turn left again at the church. There are so many churches. Yeah. There. I could not believe. <laughs> and, then, and, and then and then that wonderful philosopher MTG who said it was in a peach tree dish. So, so. <laughs> you can you can hang up now. <laughs> After that, can you believe that MTG well, did, doesn't you like? What'd you say? What can you, what you say? Can, can you believe that that MTG doesn't like Laura Loomer for some reason? <laughs> that, that, but, and, but Laura Loomer made some comment that when Kamala is is inaugurated, the whole White House is going to smell like curry. And when we call for help, we'll get a, fo- a call center that they don't speak regular English. Oh yeah. my and, and Marjorie Taylor Greene said that's just a step too far. That's too racist. Batshit crazy. Yeah. And then and then Laura Loomer made a post about Marjorie Taylor Greene implying that part of her anatomy looked like a roast beef sandwich. So oh yeah, they're really high class people. <laughs> like, oh, they're so high class. <laughs> it just can't happen. You know the fact that. <laughs> Yeah. They, they say the, the election's close. It shouldn't even be near close. <laughs> okay. Well, not not after they found that Plan B box in Laura Loomer's trash can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't think it's an insult. Roast beef sandwich is delicious. Oh, <laughs> Arby's is doing And we had to have the Canadian to take it too far. <laughs> Our national animal is the beaver. Leave me alone. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> two points Canada. is that really your national uh, animal one of them yeah it's on our nickel yeah. it's on our nickel alex <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute i thought you had like something else it was called the loony isn't it that's the dollar man the dollar oh. the quarter has a caribou the nickel has a beaver and, and then the and dime has the blue nose which is a sailing boat but, and the you know. dollar has what the loon. That's the loon. As yeah. a, literally a loon. The loony, yeah. The bird. You people are incredible. The bird, not, Thank the, you. not the prime minister. Huh? <laughs> the bird, not the prime minister. It's right. like, oh, man, yeah. You, you're asking about things that are in Canada. There's a lot of people who are pretty mad at Trudeau these days. Hmm? Yeah, what's he doing now that's pissing everybody off? Uh, messing with the capital gains tax. He's, uh, yeah, a lot of people, uh, you guys have the IRS. We have something called CRA and I want to be very quiet as I say this. I don't want to in, have their wrath come down on me, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of people who are, uh, who are, who are not happy with Mr. Trudeau's, uh, fiscal policy. Really? Yeah. A lot of pipeline projects up North are shelving until 2025 and, 
Um, just there's a lot of stuff that he is doing to uh, to tick people off. Wow, that's amazing. Which yeah. people? Canadian people. Uh, Canadian. Yeah, a lot of small business owners don't like him. And which is the, you know, some would say that's the heartbeat of of, of the economy. How long has he been, uh, how long has he been prime minister? It's got to be, it's got to be close to 10 years now, I would think. I really? Think you're, you're, yeah. allowed, you're, you're, your prime ministers are allowed to remain in office that long? Yeah, because it's the leader of the party, right? It's a parliamentary, parliamentary system. Yeah. And so the leader of the party that gets elected uh, becomes the prime minister. Well, but there's a limit, you know. There's, there's no term limits. Yeah, they don't have, yeah. You know, the, it, I, it, we've always had a saying here in New York, and uh, and we violate it occasionally, uh, that, for instance, you uh, you try to give somebody a third term, okay, oh. third, four years, and that if they get elected or they bypass it because there's some law they created or whatever, like Bloomberg did here in New York, yeah. that third term is always terrible. Yes, it's, and it's primarily, I think, because they get an attitude of of invincibility. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Bloomer was down to trying to stop people from buying sugared sodas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He had nothing else to do. He did done whatever he was yeah. going to do for the whole city. And now he's going to go after sodas. I don't know my yeah. American history that well. Didn't Roosevelt get three terms as a president? He got before the constitutional amendment. Oh, wait a minute, Marjorie. What? My phone in there? A yes. Answer it. It's Lori Thompson. So they probably want to know where we are. Yeah. Tell her to come on the show. Uh, what, is, is Roosevelt the only one that got more than two terms? Huh? Is Roosevelt yeah, the only president who's gotten more than two terms? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, as yes. president, yes. yes. He's the only yes. one. Yes. He, oh, he got I'm caught up. That, Good, thank before you. Before that, it was a norm, right? It wasn't a well, law. He got four right. terms, but he didn't survive the fourth term. Right. right. Okay. Right. right, and then after that was the, there was an there's an amendment. Right. Yes. Yes. It was in law. He made an amendment that you can't do more than two. The reason why he made it to four was because we we're in the middle of a war. Mm -hmm. okay. Nobody wanted to change horses in midstream, which yeah. is kind and of the depression and the depression too. Yeah. Well, the depression. But he made that. What he told everybody that he says, "I'm I'm president, and I'm going to stay because of the war." Mm. Well, was, but he was that was his. He said, "Keep me during." The, in fact, during the war, in the fourth, was it his fourth term? He didn't even do an inauguration. He did the inauguration in the uh, in the Oval Office, and he didn't give a speech. <laughs> Because he felt that because there was a war going on, we don't need to celebrate anything here. Well, he was also ill. He probably didn't want yeah. to be in public. Well, that yes. too. Yeah. And it was Truman that succeeded him, right? Right. Yes. I, yes. yes. Yeah, okay. No, Truman, took, he was the vice president. He was he the didn't vice president. Him. Yeah. He, he oh, was the vice right. president. Sorry, but he was the next president of the U.S. after. Yes. Right. But, then, but then he was reelected. Truman was reelected for a right. term of his own. Right. Yeah. Marjorie, mm -hmm. did you manage to talk to Lori? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. This feels good. The social studies unlike, seven is great. This is, thank you for this. I appreciate the lesson. Yeah. Unlike Gerald Ford, who's the only president who was oh, never, they're, elected. They're, never elected. Marjorie, they're at the front door. Um, they're at my our front door. Marjorie, where's Marjorie? <laughs> the front door. Front door. <laughs> she answered her phone. She's the front door. She answered her phone. She's over oh, there. Oh, here, here, here she is. Wow. <laughs> we're, we're doing our little show here that we do on Monday. Come here, grab it, grab it. Is, is it, is it Lori? It. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch you. No in way. The there, she is. <laughs> there she is. Hold wow. on. Wow. Let me turn this up so she can hear you <clears throat> guys. Okay. There we go. Can you hear? Um, okay. Talk. talk. Hi, Lori. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, come on, move hey, over, move over. Move it on over. Wow, what a, what what a, a treat! It's a, <laughs> you can, back together yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, can you do some news for us or something? <laughs> I was thinking to make some on the way over. You know, some public incident. But yeah, make oh, just make. Okay, well, how about this? Could you produce Alex a little bit, please? We could really yeah. use that. <laughs> Would you please would you please catch would you please catch people up who who are not familiar with the history of ah. who this lady is? 
Oh, Lori was my newswoman for years in San Francisco. We had many fun times. We had many fun times. <laughs> oh, radio, man, radio love... wife. Huh? Those, uh... Radio wife. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Those, those but, uh, you know, uh, some of the people from San Francisco, like Lynn and uh, and Brian and Brian. anybody else here Brian. from the Bay Area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brian and I were talking about this on Saturday night that we uh, <coughs> we, were, we were probably both at the breakfast with Bennett that you did in San Jose, I guess. And the one and the ones you did at the, the suppers with Schwartzman at uh, at the Fairmont, was it? Fairmont? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did them at the Fairmont. And then we later did them at uh, uh, what what do you call it? The, what was that club, that nightclub? Uh, for for Goss? Not for Goss. Uh, no. Uh, they, it, it, oh, bimbos, bimbos. Oh, bimbos. Yeah. oh bimbos. Mm. But I was also, I remember the when at the at your high school, Alex, when we were at the gym. <laughs> and I remember Bob Geldof singing right in front of me because I was like front row. I used to go to the front line all the time. Bob Geldof singing from Boomtown Rats when he was yeah. there. And, yeah. <laughs> those those were great. One, those I used were to try so to with you yeah. all the time. I don't we we, we got in some kind of trouble because of uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 a comedian. Uh, uh, I'm trying to remember his name now. I, I, I forget. <laughs> long. What's your name again? Yeah, I'll think. <laughs> <my driver's license. laughs> anyway, uh, but he was, he did something, and and uh, we got heat from the school and from the parents to school. And yeah, <laughs> there's always somebody ready to be uptight if yeah, there's a school yeah, involved. Yeah, they were in, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was always trying to flirt with you, Lori, but I was only like 18 or 19 years old at the time. Oh, wow. So <laughs> early. <laughs> Who are I remember people? actually talking to you, Lori. I had a, I just bought an SLK convertible, and you and I had a chat about that yeah. on the side there during one of the morning shows. Yeah, you must have hooked me because I've driven uh, convertibles ever since. Oh, how funny. <laughs> <laughs> Wind in the hair, you know. All right. Anyway, I wish I had some air to have found today. So. Yes, I is with my with my husband of two years, and oh, yes. uh, he has a daughter upstate. Yeah. So we went to a little town called Rocky Point and did mm -hmm. the whole pumpkin festival, um, you know, and uh, what else? Uh, apple picking. You know, we were in the thick of that. So right. my, it was a fun introduction to upstate New York because I read John Cheever for ages. So it worked <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> No, who were the beautiful people? up there? These are people from all around the country. Uh -huh. who every Monday, they get together with me. Yeah, all around the continent, please. Yeah. That's, That's so cool. right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you That's should right. join all us sometime. This is a fun group, and uh, it, it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun, and they're nice people. It looks like it. It's most of us, not all of us. I mean, <laughs> one guy. Yeah, the one token Canadian is a little trouble, but um, <laughs> what? I said the one token Canadian is a little bit of trouble, but yeah, he's, yeah, he's in Canada. A, he's a problem. And, uh, uh, some of the locals are Francine here, and uh, that's Jeff. He, he's up in Connecticut. And uh, uh, Paula is out in uh, Ohio and uh, eating eating cats and dogs. Of yes, course. Okay. <laughs> as one Harley does. He is in uh, in Texas. Uh, Francine is here. Uh, let's see where uh, uh, Lynn's out in California. Jeff's up in Connecticut. I think I said all of those. Uh, and Brian, and Brian Andy's California. in Georgia. Ah, uh, Charlene. And and uh, Vern Nunn is in Kentucky. So it's an international crowd. Oh, yeah. Somebody from Canada <laughs> that qualifies. Yeah, they mentioned it international. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we have somebody else who comes from. Uh, what's the fellow who comes from? South uh, Asia. Oh, oh, we have a guy. Oh, Bree. Bree. Yeah. Bree. Yeah. He usually calls at night, though. He doesn't call on the yeah. afternoon show because it's in the middle of the night there. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right. I didn't think about that. It's like three where's where's the Edward? Here. Well, that's where's why Edward today? Marjorie and I take a vacation. Oh, Edward there. Yeah. If we take a vacation and uh, we go somewhere, I really can't do a show because I would have to do it at four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. We ran <laughs> you into <know>. that. <clears throat> so, yeah. Yeah. And, it gets weird. Uh, yeah. Well, it's going to be like 10 o'clock for this show. You should be able to do this one. Yeah. Do it at a different time. This one. Yeah. About 10 o'clock. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, the um, we had a world tour booked and they canceled because of the unrest in the Red Sea area. They had to cancel like half the tour. So mm. they don't want any lawsuits or, you know, mm. anytime there's the slightest hint of uh, mayhem. They, uh, well, you don't want, if you're doing the Mediterranean, you don't want to go down around Israel. No. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, but a lot of people were peeved. Yep. 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 Oh, this is well, you cool. know. Yeah. Well, it's only, it's time for us to actually kill this. <laughs> you know. I think we killed it a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, fun, and it's a bunch of fun, nice people, and I I love this group. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep it. Let's keep it going. Well, well where you right. got somewhere else to be? Yeah, yeah I it's not like you're leaving. Yeah, now. I Some actually do got to go. I got to jump on yeah. a call, so I got to. I got to. I got to go. Canada love kids. Leaving us, so if that if Canada's leaving us, there's nothing left to do. <laughs> and I've got to. I've got to get to Springfield for dinner. Patient <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hot dogs are on sale too. I don't for know one. whether we we're gonna have the cat or the dog <laughs> tonight. A little Ohio humor there, right? <laughs> yeah. I was afraid to go there. I was wearing a fur coat. <laughs> anyway, Scott Boddicker, thank you for being with us. Marjorie, I don't know where the hell she went. <laughs> she is. Making food. Yeah. Being a good okay. host. Charlene, I thank you for being with us today. Uh, thanks to Charlie. Thanks to uh, Paula. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, 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 Andrew Deutsch and Len LaFrisco. And Francine Witt and Jeffrey Stein and Brian Neary. Wow, a lot of people wow. here today. Vernon Nunn, and of course, the lovely and attractive Mandy O'Brien is going to go out and help people do uh, exercises. Oh, fun. Yeah, which is really nice. Anyway, everybody, wave goodbye. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, wait. Hey, hey. Not one thing. We have a way we sign off here. Yeah, as a I forgot. Here. Thank you for, for reminding me. <laughs> because he says nothing for the whole hour. <laughs> but at the end of the show, he signs us off each week by saying, That's all, folks. Now we can go. Bye, everybody. See you next Good to see you, Laurie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.